How do you there guys and welcome back to Redgood TV and today what I want to do is talk to you about how to practice not what to practice but how to practice and the things to look for now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to strongly recommend to you that you don't skip parts of this video it's going to be not a short one like my normal ones it's going to be like 10-15 minutes long it's going to be loaded with information and data and things here for you. Now, the thing with this is, if you start skipping little bits, you might misinterpret what I'm trying to say and then sort of fill in the blanks and then you're kind of just where you was originally. So, uh, very important not to, to skip things. Uh, so, find yourself a moment where you can just sort of watch this somewhere, sort of some quiet 10-15 minutes you can take it all in first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to introduce myself for those of you that don't know if you're new around here my name is matthew edgar i'm in the top 60 of the pdc and i used to be a professional sports coach until very recently now i'm a award winning sports coach i was a pe teacher in a comprehensive secondary school a primary school i've coached at professional football clubs i've worked with um, sen children with special educational needs and also i used to work to upskill members of staff so i used to teach teachers how to deliver better PE and how to make it more um, inclusive and to get the most out of the session in line with the national curriculum. So that's kind of what I'm doing here. I'm trying to show you how you can get the most out of your practice session. This video isn't me saying do this and go and do this session. This video is giving you the information so you can look at your own sessions and things. If you are looking for something a little bit more personal, you'll see at the bottom here, I do provide private one-to-one -one coaching sessions via webcam like this so we'll just sit and have a chat and um, we have a look at the technique and different parts as well so loads and loads of things going in there the reason i thought the need to now make this video is due to the massive increase in practice apps but also the massive increase in this so performance anxiety at the moment we're seeing performance anxiety coming in at the professional game all the way down to the amateurs uh, i'm speaking to a lot of people at the moment within my coaching sessions who dartitis is becoming a massive thing now yes we've got lockdown where we've not been able to go out and interact and play darts in a normal environment but what that's done is that's meant that practice times increased but also we've had to play darts in a different way We've had to play darts via webcam darts or online darts or via using these apps, computer apps. Now, I'm not saying computer apps are a bad thing. There's, there's plenty of good things on there. But what I'll say about the apps is that they're not designed for step-by-step -step development. They're designed to challenge you in, if we look at this photo here, in this high category. The red category. They're designed to challenge you at the height of performance anxiety. And what I mean by that is anyone who's played Super League or County or played a game to an average will know that there's that point in a match where you miss a couple of darts at a double and you think, ah, if I'd have got that a bit sooner, I'd have a better average. Or if I hit this first dart, I'm going to get a better average. That's when your performance anxiety is right at the very, very top. Now, these apps always keep you in that category or the ones i've seen certainly do anyway you play games against bots to get an average and then you play practice games or drills but these drills will i'll, I'll play this game I do, 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 i've got 500 points now the thing is for me to be successful now and for me to succeed by beating this app and show progress i've got to beat 500 which is the very best version of me that's not me, that's the very best version of me. So now what you're going to try and do is you're going to try and challenge that against your personal best. Now your personal best is what it is, it's your personal best. You can't beat your personal best 365 days a year, especially in something that is a restrictive game. Darts, you can do a nine darter, you can hit, so you get three darts at a time, you can hit a 180 as a maximum. It's a game that's got a restriction to it in terms of the maximum level of performance, but you're going to try and always better your personal best. Now, what you shouldn't be doing is you shouldn't be challenging yourself against the best version of you, you should be building and developing you to be the best version of you, not playing the best version of you, if, if you get what I mean by that. Now, this is where the performance anxiety comes, because these apps basically give you a load of drills, but without the structure that comes from either the understanding of it or the coaching or a teaching background, 
you're not able to put this into a system that allows it to be a development sort of um, application so what you end up doing let's say is always playing the best version of yourself now what i've got over here is a four corner model now this exists in virtually every single sport but it's not been done in darts now a four corner model is basically known as a long-term player development model which basically categorizes all the key factors that you need and these are the key factors that you always need to consider whenever you're writing out a practice session a drill or a six-week development plan whatever it is you're doing you've got to consider the technique the preparation the practice and the psychology they all link you can already see here performance anxiety can come from the psychology of the practice two boxes linking straight away now what will tend to happen is when we get an imbalance within that box and within this four corner model is we cycle or we we cite it into areas like my technique's not right. So what people do, they film themselves and they'll put it on a Facebook group and they'll say, can you look at my technique to make sure my technique's right? Um, they'll change their darts. They'll change flights. They'll change. They'll, you, you get the picture. You, you know what I'm on about with that. So the, all four corners need to be considered and you need to, when you're doing something, go, right, I've got this in my mind. I'm going to do this. Is it going to develop me? Do I hit all four of these corners? If not, you've got an imbalance which will affect you some point within your play. So what you need to do is build blocks. Build blocks. Now, if we're losing weight, if we're losing weight, I'm going to lose one pound of weight for eight weeks, which is a micro development. But I won't notice that one pound of weight husbands wives girlfriends children the people you see on a daily daily basis will not see those micro gains but the person you see two months later when you go down the pub goes whoa you look good because you've lost eight pounds since you last seen him he'll notice that same thing that we've got going on here those building blocks and those micro managements is what you need to be able to see but zoomed out because what these apps are doing at the moment is they're zooming you right into the project and they're going, oh, you've improved by 0 0.7 on your average. But is that a real gain? Is it a sustainable gain? Is that a real reflection of you? Have you developed and have you built? Or are you just building up a personal best that you're now going to have to challenge yourself against on a regular basis? Now, the other thing with practice and things that we need to consider is what is the best way to practice? Now, we'll see things like apps where they'll say, throw 100 darts at the 20, throw 100 darts at the double 16 and count them. There's two problems with that. Number one is performance anxiety, because we're challenging ourselves against our personal best all the time. And number two is it's training a level of fluency. Now, when we learn as people, we learn different ways from when we're at school and how we teach in the school to how we teach adults, to teach children. There's different ways we can learn, but then what actually stays. How many of you watching this video now left school and a year later couldn't remember 90% of the stuff you did? Because you never actually learnt it. What you did is you became fluent. And that's what happens when we do this. We throw 100 darts at a treble 20, and that is a repetitive action of fluency. I'm throwing from one place, repeating a technique into one isolated area. We're not getting any board mastery in there. And we're certainly not getting any throw mastery in terms of developing me as a thrower. Now, you'll see here in the bottom corner, what is mastery? Mastery basically is a deep understanding of task. And you can see a few things here. I'll put some links in as well. There's a fantastic book that you can read called Make It Stick, which is the art of learning. The art of learning is mastery. If you can master something, you've developed in that. If you can fluent in that action, you are open to reversibility, which is why you'll play for six months. You'll have a couple of weeks off. You'll come back and go, I can't play as well as I did. What am I doing differently? Reversibility kicks in. Now, reversibility in sport happens in all different areas. But 
in darts, being a fine motor skill, it's so easy. And that's why we need to build these blocks of long-term foundations and long-term developments through mastery-style training. Board mastery, player mastery. Hitting all four corners. If you're using the apps, don't use them as a takeover of your practice. Don't let them dictate it. Use them. Take the games off there. Use them, for dip, but zoom out. Don't just go, right, I've got this app, so I'm going to do these four drills on the app. I'm going to see if I can beat that. Then I'm going to play a box and see what my average is at the end. You need to structure the practice. And there's plenty of documents out there, like I say, that will be able to help you do that. And if you can't find them or you're struggling with it, guys, and you want some personal sessions, I do offer personal sessions as well. But mastery, guys, is the most important factor to the practice. And it certainly doesn't come with this performance anxiety-based um, app training or average chasing final thing to look at guys things like smart goals they're a very good basis to start on the main thing i'll say to you is your practice needs to be purposeful so it needs to have a reason again don't just stand throwing at a board fluency do you want to be fluent in an action yeah it's great short term and yeah cram that learning in get that fluency level but does that does it, your building blocks? Does it give you what you want to give? Is it giving you that long term player development? Smart goals are a good place to start. So we're gonna go. It needs a purpose. It needs intent. There's no point in just practicing against the best version of you because what will happen is you get halfway through a game and then you'll just quit it because you're getting nowhere near. It's also ghost ghost chasing. Now you, you might see in certain computer games like Formula One games, for example, like. The best version of you will go round the map and you chase after it. And that's all you're doing. You're spending the whole time chasing that personal best. So smart goals, purposeful practice, practice with intent, practice against your development, not against the best version of you. That's the best thing I can give you guys in terms of advice. Take a look at these. Have a look at things on the screen. I'm going to put some great um facts and some great links and things for you to take a look at in the comments section i hope you found this useful i hope you'll find a way to include some of this in your practice and review your own practice which is basically what this is are you getting the most out of your own practice a bit of self-review and a few things to look for if you found this useful guys do hit a like and i'll hopefully see you soon with some more edgar tv edgar tv